I analyze the science behind how we can control our most innate desires and urges so we can understand how to steer ourselves in the habits that we like instead of them driving us. Throughout my college career, something I went and talked to several professors about was how I noticed as I went to work to do something new, like walking across the street from my genetics class to an acting school to take night classes, uncomfortable situations, even thoughts like imagining myself having to get up on stage in front of a crowd or just a certain time of day all served as triggers for me to act out bad habits, desires that I couldn't seem to shake off. Understanding the source of how these sudden desires or urges that we feel occur every day is what we need to first know so then we can go over how to control or change them versus them controlling us. Let's start by identifying that not every urge we feel to do something is bad. Some help us meet basic survival needs like food, water, and social connections. However, others we develop from habits and routines, and this is where we get into trouble. A simple example is every day you wake up, make your bed, and drink coffee. What happens is over time the act of waking up and making your bed triggers you to also want to drink coffee, which actually means that any time you make a bed anywhere, that will also serve as a trigger for you to suddenly want coffee. Coffee has become associated with making your bed. Or like younger me, every time you watch TV, you eat a snack. This means that whenever you turn on a TV, you will suddenly want to eat a snack because you've conditioned yourself to that behavior. Other urges make us curious human beings who want to learn, explore, and improve ourselves, while others, especially ones that we associate with being bad, we develop over time because they do give us relief from our own anxiety and stress. And this leads us to a big point as to how these cycles get created and how to break them. In order to create a bad desire or urge, the habit itself has to be rewarding. And this is what we can also use to break it. When we repeatedly engage in behaviors that reward us for doing them, like eating too much junk food, scrolling on social media, watching certain types of videos, every single one of these causes dopamine to release, which strengthens the neural pathways associated with these behaviors. So the next time, say, you feel stressed or anxious, it's more likely that you will seek out whatever behavior you did that rewarded you in the past. Specific examples that come to mind are, if you had a bad breakup, got a bad grade, dump hours into a post that doesn't get as many views as you hoped, and you seek relief from that anxiety in the form of eating a bunch of ice cream or watching a video, it's more likely that when you feel that same stress again, you will be triggered into going and eating even more ice cream or watching videos, strengthening those neural pathways even more until finally these connections get strengthened so much that we condition them into a daily habit. That while being a conscious choice at first, now whenever you feel any sort of stress at all, you immediately go for the ice cream or video. Your solution gets generalized as a way out for any stress you may feel, despite the specific reason you started doing it in the first place. And it doesn't have to be from stress either. Any sort of reward that you couple with any stimulus such as casually drinking beer or eating ice cream, every time you turn on the TV, you'll suddenly feel the urge to have that reward arise because it's what you did in the past. Now when it comes to being able to undo any conditioning we've done to ourselves, let's talk a little bit about triggers. As you've probably figured out, a trigger is a stimulus that suddenly gives you the urge to go to one of your past rewards. And they can either be internal triggers, like feeling stressed or happy, you have a random thought about something that happened to you 10 years ago, and this causes you to immediately seek out one of your go-to rewards. Or the trigger can be external. These are environmental cues, such as a smell, a certain time of day, like feeling the urge to eat junk food at night, or social interactions. One trigger for me that I had to overcome was the internal fear of speaking in front of a group. I grew up with a lot of speech impediments, and one day I decided to finally walk across the street to a rather large acting center where I saw Broadway shows like The Lion King growing up because I saw that they also happened to have an education department. So I signed up for two basic classes, and when I walked across the street, finally stepping into the 
building. Upon getting past the security guard, I was terrified. The elevator to go up to my first voice and speech class was begrudgingly slow, and the whole time I was triggered to run out of the building, go home to my room, and curl myself up in a blanket. However, I managed to fight that feeling and instead had one of the best nights of my young adult life. The teacher immediately saw what I was doing that caused an awful stutter I had built up, and I went back the next day walking from my anatomy class to take a stage theater class, and still nervous, had another tremendous time. Whatever ailments or bad habits that you have formed that you go to for relief, it is scary to drop them, especially in the moment you feel you need them most. But when you decide not to do it and instead choose to act out a different behavior you know you need to do, this does amazing things for you and your brain. Now we get to my favorite part of the video. What amazing things am I talking about? How do we go about changing these conditioned responses we have that we no longer want. Let's acknowledge that we don't need to pass any sort of judgment upon ourselves when we feel our urges arise. We simply acknowledge that it's there, and then we can cognitively reappraise or assess how we think about it. That instead of being something we have to satisfy or else something bad might happen, we instead reframe it as a temporary feeling that will pass. And this gets us into the first practical strategy we can use to recondition our behavior, one I like, but I will drop for more powerful strategies if I need to, being the 10 minute rule. The 10 minute rule is something that has come about in studies that show if an individual can wait 10 or more minutes before deciding to act on a sudden impulse, the time difference allows your brain to build up impulse control in your prefrontal cortex, creating and strengthening new wiring that allows your brain to better resist any impulse you might feel in the future. And during this pause in time, as the intensity of the emotion you feel diminishes, you are actually weakening the connections in your head that cause the habit, reducing the intensity of the urge itself the next time it comes about. However, if this isn't necessarily working, or if you would just like more help in retraining yourself out of your sudden urges and desires, you can do something that helped younger Matt or Trick as some viewers call me, that we can call habit replacement. Placement. The key here is that if you can identify your trigger or simply whenever you feel a trigger come up, you go and act out a replacement activity of your choice that you have pre-selected. Now make sure it's good for you, like going for a brief walk or run instead of binge eating, playing a typing game, or walking away to do some push-ups instead of watching an online video. And because it's not yet conditioned into you, you will have to force yourself to do it at first. But as researchers found out, during your cue or trigger, routine, and reward loop, you can consciously replace the routine part with something that's actually good for you, letting that reward you whenever you feel the cue come up. And as previously with the 10 minute rule, this will also cause the wiring in your brain to break the bad habit down until eventually it goes away, and just becomes a really funny story in your head of a custodian wondering why you're staring at an elevator door not pushing the button to go up to your acting class. The last thing we should discuss, and it's pretty big, if not a key driver in our bad behaviors is your environment. Our current environments are largely responsible for many of our bad habits. They are chock full of very familiar triggers that cause us to engage in our unhealthy behaviors. Apart from substituting your bad habit for a good one, why not also minimize the triggers as much as you can to begin with? While this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go and live somewhere else, it means that removing physical cues from your line of sight, if not from your living space entirely, placing better options within your line of sight, and as I found out and recommend, cleaning and completely re arranging your space is a powerful tool. This will alter how familiar your environment is, minimizing or taking away the physical and visual associations or cues your brain has made, opening up the door for new behaviors. I eventually came to work at a clean desk in a largely empty room, door closed, headphones on, no music, with a timer going in silence so now nothing can trigger me to stop working. For some of us, this may also involve 
you stopping hanging out with people who are a bad influence or no longer going to certain places or engaging with those places in the same way if you know they trigger bad behaviors. Ultimately, if you're someone who wants to improve replacing and giving space for bad habits to weaken them, every time you feel triggered is a great way. This is all hinged on one thing though. My favorite thing about teaching is seeing the look on a person's face when they put an effort on something, get it, and realize that they can actually be awesome at it. The thing that I must mention that everything hinges on is one, the replacement activity you choose if the trigger comes up needs to be something that you get a reward from after you do it. You may not feel like walking or running, but then you force yourself to walk or run, release endorphins and dopamine, where you then feel good after doing it. Cause the thing that would separate clients I had who grew to do some really cool skills and those who struggled is the ones who really did awesome learn to love the small rewards they got each time they were consistent. While the ones who struggled without a doubt hated consistency, they would refuse to find any reward for making any progress. Because if they couldn't do something like a box jump or backflip immediately, then they saw no point in trying despite all the cool things I pointed out that they were getting along the way. So like the most successful students, you can absolutely take things a day at a time, really paying attention to seeing how much better you're getting from one weekend to the next. Cause actually doing your replacement action every time is what has to happen to stimulate your brain to grow better connections while dismantling the unwanted ones. You got this. But if you wanted one more interesting fact, something I realized I did for students in my best classes or one-on-one -on -one lessons is you can actually make your brain enjoy working towards a goal by internally rewarding yourself getting excited for every step of progress you make each time you go and engage in a good habit. This will release small amounts of dopamine in your brain allowing these habits to change. Whether it takes anywhere from 18 days to months for the old ones to completely go away as the new ones form. I hope this helps you and I truly believe you can do it. I've seen it so many times. I'll see you in the next one.